I said, praise the Lord. Will spare you. In your life, in your family, in our in every state, we local government, and in the whole state, and in Nigeria, our beloved country. The wickedness of the wicked will come to an end. And the Lord will bless the just people in Jesus' name. Our righteous God will never forget you. Now, we come to the final day. Every remnant of what remains, the Lord will sweep. And tonight, I'll tell you something, tonight you wait until the very end. What are you? Will you wait? Because people don't know. I could tell you stories of the people that felt they had not got anything. And then as we are giving testimony. Or we are saying the final prayer. And we are dismissing everyone. And we are saying, God be with you. God bless you. Bam. The miracle. That's the reason why today you are here. You are here. You are here. Now. Your father in the Lord is here. You don't want to leave your father in the Lord waiting here. And then you have gone me that the very last minute put the latter of heaven father we thank you tonight we bless we acknowledge what Christ has done on the cross of Christ. and we know that tonight wonders salvation Amen. healing Amen. deliverance Amen. miracle Amen. and the anointing that break the yoke will flow in jesus name Amen. confirm your power and confirm your miracle confirm your goodness in every life tonight in jesus name Amen. but thank you because we know it is name we pray God has answered your prayer tonight as we come you can sit down as we come to the final message at this time on end, we're talking about unending benefits and the cross of Christ there are people that do not understand that the blessings of God can continue every day every week every month all the years of your life for the rest of your life and i want to show you tonight how to make the blessing permanent it's come i didn't hear your amen benefits blessings miracles salvation total freedom emancipation, liberation, and total recovery of everything you have lost in your life. Abundance coming upon your life and making that unending that as we are rejoicing today that God has done something, then tomorrow as you wake up, new miracle every day a daily miracle in your life in jesus name hey, look at your bible colossians chapter 2 i'm looking at verse 9 for him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily in him in christ our savior in christ our healer in christ our deliverer in Christ, our liberator. In Christ, the advocate that stands, that sits by the right side of God to make every promise of the word 
permanent to your life. It says in him now. If you crawl out and you say, that was Corsair time. I gave my life to Christ. I came into him. And he came into me. And his salvation now is in me. And then you say, crusade is over. And then you crawl out. Uh -huh. You are no more in him. And the fullness of the blessing of the Godhead will no more be there. But as you abide. I will abide. I said, I will abide one day at a time. Every day. You say, today, it's not a long time. I'll abide in him. I'll not be out of him. I'll not allow the door uh, to open uh, in my heart. And then uh, I go out of Christ. But in him, for in him uh, dwelleth. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Look at verse 10, beautiful. And ye are complete in him. You'll become incomplete if you go out of him. If you don't abide, if you say crusade is over, so submission to Christ is over, crusade is over, so uh, abiding in Christ is over. If you go out, we cannot guarantee him that there will be unending benefits in the cross for you. But ye are complete in him, which is the head of principalities and power. He is the head of all principality and power. And is in charge. In your life, is in charge. In your family, is in charge. And when Stop to any precision, any power that thing more. But you abide in him. Come to one. I'm reading from verse 13. Look at this. Who has delivered us? He's done it already. He did it on the cross. And the moment you give your life to the Lord and you say, yes, it's for me. It was done for me. It says, he but us from the power of darkness. To somebody there. I said that he delivered you. He has delivered me from the power of darkness and he has translated me you understand what that means he took you from where you were and he brought you to a new location it's taking you away from darkness it's brought you into light it's taking you away from honor the power of the how no enemy can torture torment your life anymore in jesus name let me explain to you. Uh, you know, somebody was being chased about by powers stronger than himself. And the man was saying face to face, you, as long as I'm seeing you, I, you will never make it. And you're on here, you're on there. And because in his locality, is able to get you and then to get passport and you get visa and then and you are flown to another country the man who was the you he doesn't know to get the passport he doesn't know to get the visa and then you are far away you have been translated from the power of that man and you are translated to a place where he cannot touch you, he cannot say anything to you, he cannot torment you anymore spiritually where you were. And the devil and the demons and the evil powers were tormenting you and you were just like their slave. But now you got passport. You got this, sir. You enter into that aeroplane, and the Lord brings you to another kingdom. In that new kingdom, Satan cannot operate there.
operate there. All those powers of darkness cannot operate there. He has delivered me from the power of darkness. And he has translated me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen for me. Yeah. Amen for you. Yeah. He has set you free. Yeah. You remain in Jesus' name. That's why tonight I come to you to tell you how the miracles of God how the healing you have got, how the salvation you have got, every blessing that you have got, how that will abide and remain in your life. Unending benefits in the cross of Christ. There are three things I'm looking at. Number one is the cross. Number two is the Number three is the crown. Number one, reconciliation and redemption by the cross. By the cross. He died on the cross of Calvary. And because of that, you are reconciled unto the Father. Reconciled unto our Creator. Reconciled unto the Father of angels and men. And the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Reconciled and redeemed. Number one, reconciliation and redemption by the cross. Number two, recovery and renewal through his crucifixion recovery i recover i said i recover so in there i recover recovery and renewal in your life everything in your profession everything will be renewed in Jesus name recovery and renewal through his crucifixion and then after the cross after the crucifixion after the crown i came here to announce to you that as we abide in christ until the very end and then when he will come he will take you home you will wear a crown you will reign i said you will reign receiving our rewards with the crown remember three things number one the cross number two crucifixion and number three the crown let's look at number one number one we're looking at reconciliation and redemption by the cross look at colossians chapter one reading from verse 20 it says and having made peace through the blood of his cross we were at enmity with God. You turned your back in the past to God. God said, go. You said, no, I will not go. He says, sit. I will not say stand. I will not stand. Walk in the light. You said, no, you are going to walk in darkness. We were enemies of God. And the Bible says, there is no peace, says the Lord, to the wicked. There's no peace for the sinner. There's inward internal turmoil internal commotion and there's family problem there's family violence there's fighting all the time in every tribe and in every community this one is against that that one is against that because christ had not come into their life but now christ died on the cross and then he took all that nature pugnacious uh, nature the fighting nature, the violent nature, he took all that away and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him, look at this, to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether be the things in earth or things in heaven. And then in verse 21, he tells us and you that were sometime alienated separate God between you and the almighty God between you and your maker your sin separated you from God but now he says some time ago before you knew Christ you were alienated separated and enemies in your mind you were an enemy to the law of God you will not you did not accept the law of God and if today you still don't accept the word of God, 
the principles of the word and the law that he has given us. He said, this is the way to go. What key therein? If you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I just go to church. I just read the Bible. I just sing the hymns. I'm religious, but I don't want to be righteous. You see, an enemy of God. But when you turn, when you say, how can I fight with my father, even your father here on earth? How can I fight with my father, my God, my creator, my maker in heaven? This enmity now, if a rat fights with a lion, who is going to win? If the weak fights against the strong, who is going to win? If the creature fights against the creator, who is going to win? If me, puny man, poor man, and uh, impoverished man, if I fight with the Almighty, if I fight with the one that has all power on earth and in heaven, who is going to win? Because of that, I said, the enmity comes to an end. I turn from my sin. I turn to my Savior, Jesus Christ, whom the Father has sent between me and the Heavenly Father. Then you that were enemies, alienated, and enemies in your mind by wicked works, by wicked works, Wickedness makes us an enemy to a holy God. Wickedness makes us enemies to a merciful God, a loving God. It says, what brought the enmity between you and God, between man and God, between the woman and God, and between that boy, that girl and God, what brings the enmity in the wicked works? It says, yet now, yet now, as he reconciled, yet now Christ died on the cross. And because of that death, as you come on that, that cross and you believe it was done for you, it says, yet now as he reconciled. And then in verse 22, it tells us in the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Also, look at the word there, important word, if ye continue. If ye continue. Now, crusade is not for play. Crusade is not like gambling. Crusade is not like, okay, I'm there now, and I collected some things, like we are collecting tomorrow, I can live the way I want, I can go back, I can go back to my marijuana, I can go back to my alcohol, back to womanizing, I can go back to fornication, I can go back to uh, adultery, I can go back to the works of the flesh, because crusade is over now. You see the way the blessing will continue and the way the salvation will continue if he continue in the faith i will continue shout it out in all the other locations i will continue in the faith grounded and settled moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereby i fall whereof i fall a mage uh, in hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 1 hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a crowd of witnesses what does that mean? It says, you are not the first to come, to enjoy, to receive, to obtain the blessing of God. Other people in chapter 11 of this Hebrews, they came like Enoch. He had each and he continued. Abel, like Noah, like Abraham. And he became a friend of God. 
not a friend for one day and for one week not a friend for just a short period of time a friend of God from the time he knew God until he breathed his last and now he is with God in heaven it says we're compassed about was a cloud of witnesses he says now let us lay aside every witch we do so easily beset us in the past you are weak and the reason is you were going near the brink every time it's like um, you know two people were interviewed and uh, they ever to uh, this man and so the man asked them asked the first one and he said you are license driver aren't you he said yes a good driver aren't you he said yes he said if you are going driving on the road and you see a ditch on this side and then there is no ditch over here how will you drive oh he said i'm so good I can get near as near as possible to the ditch and nothing will happen. Say, so, okay, that's all right. Then the second person he said, Your driver, aren't you? Yes, I am. License, aren't you? I am. Express, aren't you? Yes, I am. If you see a ditch very near, how will you drive? He said, I will keep away from that ditch as far as possible. As I'm driving, the man said, this one will be my driver. The one who will keep far away from the ditch as far as possible. But the one who said, he's so clever, he can be as near as possible, and it doesn't matter. He said, I will allow this man to drive me. But that's what the Lord is saying. When you see the temptation is there, you see the ditch is there, and the things you used to do, the places you used to go, the nightclub you used to visit, and when they're inviting you again, and the places of the actions of the flesh, when they call you, say no, you'll not say, well, I am saved. I am sure, and I can drive as near as possible to the ditch. That's dangerous for you. Be wise, and then it says, wherefore, because we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us, let us run for patience, the race that is set before us. I pray the grace of God will keep you. The love of God will keep you. The power will uphold you all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 2 there. Verse 2 says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He gave us the salvation. He gave us the healing. He gave us the deliverance. And he says, every time if temptation comes, looking unto Jesus. If trial comes, looking unto Jesus. If the old life tries to sneak in again, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross you see that the joy he was looking at the joy of our redemption and the joy of our reconciliation and because that joy was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god you'll be there i will be there look at mark chapter 8 now Jesus carried his cross and he's telling us to identify with him. And the cross brought redemption to humanity, reconciliation to humanity, and blessings, a lot of blessings for humanity. And with you, as we carry our cross, because 
there is a cross for everyone. It might be somebody that belittles you and looks at you. You are now born again, and he looks at you as if you've taken the wrong step. And in your mind, you feel hurt. That's the cross. Or somebody that, you know, invites you to come and do something, and you know that thing is wrong. We used to do that together. I cannot do that again. And because you said you'll not do that again, it begins to, you know, talk to other people. So and so, he has gone to join born again, born again people. He has gone to join, uh, you know, those who say uh, they will not commit sin. It says they will not bribe. It says they'll not do that. He'll not do that. They'll talk against you. When you hear that, it crosses your mind. You say, but I'm not doing a good thing. I'm better than I was before. A new life has come. And look at the way they're looking at me. That's the cross. Look at what Jesus said in, Je in Mark chapter 8, verse 34. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. When they abuse you, you know, in the past, when somebody throws a mud at you, you say, wait. You know how to say that against somebody? You pick your own, you throw it back. When somebody crosses your way, at that time, when they cross your way, you say, uh-huh. You know how to make somebody uncomfortable? I too, I know. And then you also cross their way. When they look at the words they want to use, and they use a bad word, a word that makes somebody's tummy to be running, and then you, say, you use that against me, then you go to the dictionary, and you look for the most stinking word, and you throw it at them. That was the past. But now, you are born again now, you are a child of God, and Jesus said, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself when he do something against you now. Because you know you are following Christ, you deny yourself. Your mind will say, Give it to him. Your mind will say, Throw it at him. Your mind will say, You want somebody to walk over you like that? And you'll be like a foolish person, dense and dumb. Get up and slap him. Then you deny yourself. That thing that is telling you to do what you used to do. Jesus said, let him deny himself. Look at this and take up his cross. You have believed through the cross of Christ. Now you have your own cross to bear. And he says, let him deny himself and pick up the cross. And when they say something you used to cry about, now you will smile. When, you, when they say something or do whatever that you used to be moody about, and you are just there, you are depressed. What am I going to do? I feel lonely. How can they say that against somebody? How can they call somebody that kind of name? Now you cheer up and you carry your cross with a smile. And it doesn't matter anymore what they do, what they say, how they go, or whatever. You know that you are under the protection of the Lord. I've lost my amen there. And nothing from the enemy, nothing from the persecutors will affect you anymore. You take up your cross. Are you, is that all right? I said, is that all right? You take up that cross and knock your enemy with it. No. You just smile and you tell them, God loves me and God loves you. God is taking care of me, and God will take care of you. And then you will become a source of repentance, of salvation to those people who are doing those things against you, and your life will never be the same again. When he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, 
he said unto them and he's saying unto you whosoever will come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me and in that way you'll continue with the lord all the days of your life in jesus name number two now number two is recovery recovery and renewal through his crucifixion recovery if you are been sick the hand of the lord is upon you here sickness will vanish away you will recover but you know sometimes if the mind the heart the spirit that is so sorrowful something happened and that thing that happened weigh you down all the time to the crusade you sang you prayed you raised your hand you clapped you rejoiced and then the moment you go back that thing that had been in the soul that depresses you that makes you feel that am i in depression is something happening that is going to crush me destroy me and scatter my life then the lord comes to you and he gives you recovery your soul now can be happy your spirit now can rejoice and all the things you know there are people they're so depressed because of that sorrow in heart and they have not recovered that's why we reach in the papers and we hear the news about so and so committed suicide so and so hanged himself so and so killed himself you will not kill yourself everything that brings oppression or depression that makes a person so much in despair that he feels there's no there's no chance living anymore there's no uh, there's no reason to live anymore i am going to kill myself it will not happen to you joy will come in your life happiness will come in your life a new life a vibrant life will come in your life in jesus name because you will recover and then renewal everything that needs a new touch a new revelation a new turning around that your life will take on a new splendor there will be renewal in your life but how through the crucifixion of jesus christ look at acts chapter 2 verse 36 therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that god has made that same jesus whom ye have crucified that same jesus whom they crucified that same jesus they put his the crown of thorns on his head that same jesus they beat him with, with those waves that same jesus that they crucified he has made him both lord and christ and when he's lord in your life all that depression will not remain so when they had that in verse 37 then and now when they had this they were preached in their heart and they said unto peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do what shall we do if you always ask that question trouble will not remain if you always ask that question depression will not remain always ask that question all the calamities you are worried about everything will evaporate in jesus name what shall we do now if you have not known christ and you have not handed over your life to christ there's something you must do if you are so if you are born again you are a child of god and you are suffering persecution and it's leading to almost uh, depression 
There's something uh, you can do. If something has gone wrong, uh, maybe you mistakenly did something that wasn't right, and that then brings confusion and your assurance you don't have anymore. You ask the question, what shall we do? And then uh, when you have the answer, so what you will do? Recovery will come. Renewal will come. And every time when there's trouble like that, you take inventory every time, every day, and you answer the question, what shall we do? Your life will have constant, daily, refreshing, and renewal in Jesus' name. Now, for those who are still to give their lives to Christ, here is what you are to do. Look at verse 38. It says, then Peter said unto them, repent repent that's the very first thing you do you say what shall we do i feel the pressure of my sin i feel the punishment of my sin i feel the consequence of my sin i regret all the things i've done what shall i do repent but if you are born again and then you have this you know sinking spirit it's like everything within you is sinking and you are asking what shall we do what shall i do remember Remember, you have given your life to Christ. Remember, he has translated you from the hand and from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. Remember, he's living with you. Remember, no power can conquer you anymore. For the sinner, you want to enter into this new life. Rep Believer who says, depression here, disease here, problem here, what shall we do? Remember, and then you have been persecuted. And you know, somebody is saying something about you. Throw it. They, they are watching you. If they, if they say something and you begin to cry, uh -huh, you have shown them a secret. You have shown them when they say this kind of thing, it makes you to cry. And when they say something uh, and you foul, they this. If we say this, if we do this, he will foul. When they say something uh, and then uh, you withdraw into a corner and you cannot talk to anybody anymore and you lock up yourself, they know what to do to you to make you hide. And if you don't come out, are you going to have your success? Now, when they do something and persecute, for the sinner, repent. For the believer, I mean, all these challenges, remember. And then, uh, when you are persecuted, rejoice. Somebody help me shout, rejoice. If somebody abuses you, and he says something, normally in the past, you'll drop your head. You'll be unhappy if you smile, if you rejoice. That, you know, what you've said about me is only the grace of God that has kept me that I'm not like that. I could have been worse. And when somebody does something that they think will make you cry, you say, praise the Lord. The Lord is with me. And no matter what happens, Say, I'm not going to go into a corner somewhere hiding myself. I rejoice, and the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. One, repent. Two, remember. Three, rejoice, and the devil will never box you up again in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 6. In Romans chapter 6, verse 6, it said, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. With him. And we don't allow that old man to take the better part of us. The old man that used to behave in the old way and sing the old song and cry the old places, old, old, old that old man that old nature that old personality is crucified and we identify with christ it says knowing this that my old man is crucified that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin 
Henceforth, I will not serve sin. I was waiting for you. Henceforth, I will not serve sin. The devil cannot force you to do anything. You have your free will. You have your decision. You know, some people, they still, how did you do this? And the devil made me do it. A lie? How did you tell this lie? The devil made me lie. You went the wrong way. How could you have done that? The devil, the devil, uh uh, is you that made that choice. And you didn't deny yourself. You were careless. But now you understand all the days of your life. The devil can't make you do anything. I didn't hear your amen. You know, somebody, uh, somebody said something, and the fellow be got, became angry and was shivering like this with anger. And um, so somebody said, ah, I thought you said you are born again. You are a child of God. And you see that you are so angry, and it is visible. We can see. Uh, the devil made me angry. No devil can make you angry. It is not what they said that made you angry. It is what you thought, your reaction to what they said that made you angry. If somebody says anything uh, and the old man will react, wanting to get angry, then you say, old man, you are no more in charge of my life. I am now in charge. Old man, you are crucified. Shut up. That old man of your past life was shut up. You have the victory. Knowing this, you have to know that, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth, henceforth from today, henceforth from now on, we should not serve sin. Look at Galatians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. I identify with Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Christ the Christ of love, the Christ of compassion, the Christ of mercy, and the Christ of grace. He lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He was crucified, and you are crucified for him. He was on the cross. And you are bearing your cross, you identify with Christ on the cross, you identify with Christ in crucifixion, and your life is free from today in Jesus' name. Number one, the cross. Number two is the crucifixion. Number three now is the crown. Receiving our rewards with the crown. My brother, my sister, and all those who are going to give their lives to Christ tonight, you will wear a crown. You will reign. I said you will reign. Everything that comes against you as you give your life to Christ and you are identified with Christ, you will wear a crown and you will reign in Jesus' name. Now, look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. It says, But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. After the cross, crowned with glory and honor. After crucifixion, crowned with glory and honor. After all the shame, all the pain, of the degradation on the cross, now crouched with glory and honor. That, by the grace of God, it should taste death for every man. 
taste death for every man. He's gone before us, and the death, you should have died. He has taken that. You will not die that death again. Premature death, no more. Untimely death, no more. Enemies death, no more. And dying the death of another person that is not meant for you, no more in Jesus' name. And then eternal, everlasting death in hell fire, no more in Jesus' name. By the grace of God, he tasted death for every man. Look at verse 10. Look at the consequence of that. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory. So that he brings many sons and daughters unto glory. Those who say, I surrender, I belong to Christ, I do not belong to Satan anymore, and you give your life to the Lord, he has tasted death for you, and then he brings you as a son, as a daughter, unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. And now we know that Christ has the crown. Where's the crown? How about you now? How about me now? Look at this, First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. Chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now. Each for a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible, incorruptible crown. Now heaven recognizes crown on your head. I said the power to reign in your life in Jesus' name. Then in verse 26, it tells us, I therefore, so wrong. He said, now that I know, I'm going to wear a crown. Everything the race the Lord has set before me, now that I know, not even Satan can hinder you. Not sickness can hinder you. And not the powers of darkness in the world can hinder you. He said, therefore, I so run, not as and so fight, not as one that beateth the air. Your life will be purposeful. Yeah. And as you are purposefully going in the direction you ought to go, every negative thing totally cancelled in your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 27, it says, But I keep my body under. What does that mean? If a child is, you know, running about and wanting to destroy, they destroy this so unknowingly. You say that child, child can sit down here. And then you make him sit down here to control him. You put that child under. If you're here and there, go here, go there, go there, you say, huh, isn't and then you say, uh, brain, cool down. I'm not going to do that. You put that brain under. If your hands, when somebody does something, and the thing that comes to you is you raise your hand and slap him, and you remember, uh -uh, hand come under control. If they are doing something somewhere, and then everybody is running there, and your feet want to run there, you say, mind your business. Whatever is happening there is none of your business. Legs, feet, stay. That's bringing your feet under control. If they are watching something, you know, maybe there is a crime, and then the people are watching and they are hollering, I say if they are on a football field, and your eyes stray there, and uh, your eyes, you want to say, okay, you want to enjoy it like you say, no, eyes come under control. Turn your eyes another way. And when all the members of your body and your life, you put that under control, where they are running to, you are not running there, you will not miss your crown. You know, sometimes those who walk and walk a lot, they are working for God, but they expend energy. 
And when, like a preacher like me now, Pastor, you know, we jump here, we jump there, we do this crusade and do that. And then after the crusade, when everybody has gone, if the body is tired and the body is weak, and then somebody said, you know, if you will take some champagne and take some alcohol, you'll come back alive and you will have the power of champagne i said thank you i must put that thought under control i'm going to live under the power of christ let me hear your amen the power of alcohol or the power of christ which one is greater which one is better which one is heavenly and so when any temptation comes that you should misuse any part of your body, Paul the Apostle said, I keep my body under and bring it into subjection, lest by any means, look at that, look at Paul, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You will not be a castaway. Satan will not pull you back into the world anymore in jesus name revelation chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 11 revelation chapter 3 verse 11 behold i come quickly the lord is coming i said the lord is coming if you have given your life to the lord you remain with the lord and then when it will come, the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we which are alive shall be caught up together to meet them in the clouds. If he comes and he meets you standing, he meets you saved, he meets you that was saved following after the way of the Lord. Then he says he's going to reward you. You are going to wear a crown. I see you into the future. And I see you having your shining crown in Jesus' name. You will not go back to idol worship. You will not go back to occultism. You will not go back to your old lifestyle. It says, behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. What are you? Nobody will take your crown. You have come to Christ. You will abide in Christ. And if he stays long before he comes, you keep on holding fast to the salvation you have got, to the healing you have got, to the miracle you have got, and your crown will be preserved forever for you in Jesus' name. Now, there's still a chance today for you to come in and for you to say, I want that salvation. I want that forgiveness. I want that new life. And I want it now. And remember, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. Christ was crucified for you. And he wore that crown of thorns for you. He suffered so much for you. So that your sins will be forgiven. Your life will be turned around. And then you'll be able to say by the grace of God, I am saved say that this is the chance for everyone now is the end of this crusade this november and they should seal your salvation heads bowed and eyes closed heads bowed and eyes closed you're giving yourself to the Lord. You have not done it before. And you say today, I will not allow this day to pass by. I must hand over. I must surrender. I must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved tonight and be forgiven tonight. You have heard and you are going to keep the victory after you have got the victory. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand and say, this is my night. I will not allow this night to pass me by. I want forgiveness. I want salvation. I want reconciliation with God. I want a new life in the Lord. Oh Lord, here am I. I surrender myself unto you. Where are you? Where are you? Rest of that time. Rest of that time. In any other congregation where you are, any place where you are, location where you are, 
you are hearing the sound of my voice salvation is coming to you now just raise up your hand there in any other context here is the moment of your salvation just raise up your hand if you are raising up your hand god bless you there god bless you there uh, please stand up you are standing up for christ you are saying salvation today for me redemption today for me my name to be in the book of life today god bless you god bless you raise up your hand and stand up and say lord i come lord i come i surrender myself to you i don't want to perish in sin i don't want to continue in sin i come i come i come to christ my savior you raise up your hand and then you stand up uh, let's pray together as you have done that you tell the lord oh lord i thank you for the invitation i thank you for the salvation i thank you for what you've done for me now i come receive me lord forgive me lord save me lord change my life and put my name write my name in the book of life in heaven amen I'm praying for you now, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the cross, for the crucifixion, and for the crown of thorns that Jesus wore for everyone. And now, as these ones take up their mind, they come to Christ, they will not go back to their sin. They come to Christ. They not go back to uh, all the foolish things they were doing before. Oh Lord, I pray, forgive them in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, the joy of salvation will come to them. The joy of redemption, reconciliation will come to them now in Jesus' name. Give them your grace to keep on standing your grace to abide your grace to remain in the salvation of the lord confirm it lord in every one of their lives in jesus name i pray our counselors are there very quickly and they'll give you the slip to feel we're calling on our state overseer now to help us this time of counseling counselors let's take their name now 